So we'll talk about that. So you're a QLogic customer, obviously, you just mentioned that. So uh, let's talk a little bit about FCOE. Um, Wikibon, Stu, was estimated that there's $25 billion in assets built up, installed in Fiber Channel. No CIO in his or her right mind is going to rip and replace that. Right? Correct, so, yep, absolutely. So, so what, is, what does FCOE bring to the table that, that addresses that? So you, you, yeah, you, you, you Bob, want, sorry. Yeah, yeah, oh, so sorry, me? Bob, Bob, okay. Go ahead. So certainly, yeah, um, for it. FCOE point of view, it, it's there's a transition, right? So you lots of customers who have a very, you know, a dedicated fiber channel networking components, and then now as they look at widening, widening the pipes, going from one gigabit to ten gigabit, there's a lot more things that you could be doing on that new pipe, that Ethernet pipe. So they're transitioning and trying to minimize their costs and doing that and doing that across the STOE kind of capabilities and getting the benefit of both you know, the old technology migrating to new technology and getting now simplification from a networking point of view. The number of cables coming out the back, also the management point of views, the switching aspects and whatnot. So that kind of minimizes all those components. And it makes it a lot easier for customers to deploy because actually the time to deploy is one of the biggest concerns. Right, Dave, so, so if I, I can hop in here. So when I, I've spent a lot of time working on fiber channel over ethernet and convergence. If I turn the clock back three years ago, uh, it was really companies like IBM, HP, and when they were talking about how to build their next generation of infrastructure, um, Virtualization one it wasn't as big of a piece there. It was the power, cooling, and density that they were doing, and, and starting to think about what does it mean when I'm going to have thousands of virtual machines in a single rack. So starting to plan for that, and they needed to understand that if I can't move to that single network, I can't fit it. It's just that the, the power constraints and the architectural issues that they, they, they just were going to be limited. So convergence started really on the supplier side, and that really that driver from companies, yeah, you know, IBM who's leader in the, the blade server space and driving that compute in there, and if you fast forward to today, um, you know, customers really are virtualizing a lot more, they're taking advantage of this, and therefore from an efficiency standpoint, uh, you know, customers are understanding the convergence work, uh, the vendors that can deploy, um, you know, the multi-protocol chips, uh, you know, such as uh, you've got the converged uh, network adapters from QLogic, who tends to deliver fast to the marketplace, uh, you know, yes, are going to be able to lead. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how are you using the, uh, it's QLogic CNAs, how, how, are you, how are your customers using those? So a lot of times they will deploy, like a, for instance on a Blade Center chassis, they'll deploy all the new blades, and they may have older chassis that have the older technologies, and they'll migrate the workloads, move them and do B-motion either dynamically or statically, and then migrate them into the new platform. So that new investment stream, they really look at trying to simplify things, so they'll be purchasing not the, the old style of adapters, and now go more towards the CNA kind of capabilities, and be able to share that pipe and reduce all those costs for themselves. So where do you see that going? Is that going to extend, so that's at the server level today, is that going to extend to the top of the rack switch and then eventually, you know, deeper Oh, absolutely, it's, it's going to go across the entire network. I mean, it's going to, it starts at the server component, it will go all the way up through the entire end to top end. of the rack, yeah. end to end. And how long do you think that'll take? Is that a two year transition, 10 year, You know, it's all, it's all about the adoption of like 10 gig right now. I mean, it, it's going to take some time, it's not a two year adventure, it's probably more of like, like a five year adventure at that mm -hmm. point in time. Now do you, you sole source the QLogic CNAs? No, we you? actually have a number of different CNAs in our market in a portfolio. We do have choice. We have, you know, we work with the other other vendors like Emulex and whatnot, but you know, customers are the ones that dictate it exactly to us what we should be providing. How do you determine or how do the customers determine what goes where? Do they not even have visibility on that decision? It's really, you know, it's what they're comfortable with, what vendor they've been working with over over time. If they're working with QLogic from the fiber channel component side, uh, they may gravitate to QLogic also on the CNA side. It's really all about the trust factor. Yeah, so what do you see as the important factors there from the standpoint of that infrastructure? What's really, where should the vendor community, particularly QLogic and Emulex and, and, and Brocade, be focused? You know, where do you want to see them focused as a customer of theirs? We really, you know, look at the customer needs and from a cost point, and then also about a performance also. So having a wide diverse portfolio, being able to supply customers who have, you know, maybe a, a more of a cost issue, and then likewise also a performance issue, and have a, a larger portfolio of, of adapters that kind of marry between their different needs, from all the way from the cost aspects, all the way up to performance. Yeah, excellent. Okay, Stu, any other any questions for Bob, or? No. No, you good? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. It's a beautiful I, day I, today, I, though. It, yeah. How uh, about, uh, um, let's talk a little bit about virtualization, um, yeah. a little bit more, and um, where you see that heading. 
and, and, and the kind of pressures that it's going to put on that, that infrastructure? So a lot of customers right now, as we're talking with some of the analysts, they always talk about the, the phases of adoption, like you know, virtualization 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. And so from a 2.0 perspective, it's all about trying to simplify things and get started, get more automation. But more importantly also, they're looking at the, the workload, how efficient those machines are running, those VMs, when they land on that server, is it the most efficient platform to run that, that workload? So from a virtualization perspective, they're looking at you know, not just only virtualizing smaller workloads, but more importantly, the large enterprise class applications also. So like SAP deployments. Yeah, you know, SAP, there's like three different tiers, the back end tier, the mid tier, and also the front end tier. And we see a lot of customers saying, hey, it worked great on those, all of our file and print servers, our DNS servers. We want to now propagate that and get the ease of use we've seen in virtualization across our entire infrastructure be able to have HA capabilities, the DRS, things that, all those add-ons that VMware associates from a virtualization point of view gives them benefits. So they really want to start seeing have that adopt across the entire spectrum of their offerings. So from a data center point of view, I think you're going to see a lot more customers virtualizing enterprise class applications. They're going to put more demand on the processor. It's going to have more demands from a memory perspective. I mean, IBM, when they brought out our brand new design, it was all about having more memory and more memory bandwidth in that, on those systems, all because of the fact that virtualization is a huge driver from a performance standpoint. So, final question for me was, what advice would you give to customers that are looking to prepare for convergence? Some of them are afraid of, of convergence and FCOE. What advice would you give them? Certainly understand the, uh, the, the pressure points in their, in their infrastructure. Understand that you know, not all workloads behave the same way. Understand exactly how they're going to roll out virtualization. Understand the type of workloads they have. Understand that you know, not everything should just go one pipe because you could chew up that pipe and now have no, no bandwidth whatsoever and have bottlenecks. You know, I had one customer who was talking to me yesterday and they said, well we actually you know, implemented VDI on top of our production environments. I said, well, that's a pretty bad idea because you, would, you have two different demands and now having it going across one pipe, it simplified them, but it caused lots of performance issues in their network. So that was one of the biggest concerns, understand your workloads. Excellent. We're here with Bob Zuber at uh, VMworld Live, SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage, um, talking about convergence, uh, that little piece of technology called CNAs, talking about QLogic as a supplier and some others, but that, that little piece of, of IP that's so important. You Absolutely. Know, of, uh, supporting the network, it's really interesting. And, uh, and uh, appreciate you coming on. Great, thank you very much, David. Yeah. Good to have you. Thank you. Stu, thank hey, you. Stu. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, the next up is the CIO Roundtable. Uh, we got a great discussion, and uh, we'll be back. SiliconANGLE.